Megumi Yunmuto, uh, Vice President of the Japanese International Cooperation Agency. Welcome. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming. It's really an honor to have you with us. Um, your presence here is very important because, as you know, uh, Morocco recently experienced an earthquake very close to here. And Japan has a lot to teach the world, right? Yes. Of um, I was wondering if there was a Japanese model to crisis management, to building resilience, to reconstruction, to all these stages, what would this Japanese model be? Thank you very much uh, for the very central question. Um, we, don't, we don't say our model will fit all situations, but at least uh, we're trying to synthesize what we have learned from all these uh, past natural disasters, including uh, uh, earthquake, but also other uh, like uh, typhoons or like uh, 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 monsoon, rain, all other uh, natural disasters. And uh, that has been crystallized into the concept uh, written in the Sendai framework for disaster risk reduction. Maybe uh, uh, you recall in 2015, there were the SDG goals, Paris Agreement for Climate, but there was also this uh, UN uh, level agreement of many countries on this approach to disaster risk reduction. Uh, it was uh, 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 through a conference held in Sendai, Japan, uh, and that's why it's called the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction. And uh, uh, that was based on our really first-hand experience of uh, 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 going through this big earthquake, it's called the uh, uh, Great Japan, I East Japan earthquake in 2011, and uh, how we coped with it and how we, we did the reconstruction after that. So it's really sharing experience and the essence of this Sendai framework for disaster risk reduction is um, they are uh, um, uh, several parts. One is know your risk. This is very simple, but because the types of natural disasters are really kind of like increasing these days, uh, we have to be prepared for uh, earthquakes, water-related disasters, not just the heavy rain, but also like a slow um, sea level rise or like a drought, temperature related uh, disasters. These are all the risks. So for a, a certain region on a country, we are sharing uh, our uh, experience um, about this, ex I mean, importance of knowing the risk beforehand, studying it, and even kind of like a communicating to the com communities uh, to, so that awareness is uh, uh, there. Okay, so that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is, uh, uh, based on this uh, risk assessment, start investing in whatever that can be done ex ante. Um, not just uh, 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 hard infrastructure, but also soft infrastructure. In our case, we have many uh, uh, earthquakes, so the hard infrastructure part is really uh, uh, retrofitting or redoing uh, structures, housing, buildings, and also infrastructure to be uh, uh, seismic uh, uh, resistant. Right. So uh, uh, that is uh, um, a part of this ex ante investment. For the soft component, it is really um, building systems on how to communicate to the uh, people on how to do early evacuation, on how to be prepared uh, ex ante, J just having this map of what to do beforehand. Okay, but even with this preparedness, uh, um, natural disasters come, right? And w after that, the most important part we uh, that we have to the, we want to communicate is uh, build back better. Uh, not just uh, um, uh, build back in the state that you were in before, 
but learn from the uh, lessons and make sure that the urban planning, for example, is at least uh, better than it was before. For example, I, uh, person I was personally uh, uh, involved in the uh, assistance to the Philippines when this super typhoon hit in 2013. Uh, of course, uh, we, we shared our um, uh, medical teams, uh, response teams uh, uh, as JICA first, but then the next thing uh, uh, we uh, um, uh, promoted, I mean, we uh, tried together with the uh, government of the Philippines is uh, better urban planning because uh, uh, when these like uh, typhoons come, we learn that the coastal areas are very, very, uh, uh, I mean, uh, risky. So we had to evac evacuate hospitals or like uh, 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 very core uh, city offices to higher elevated areas. So we uh, supported in doing that kind of like a rethinking of city planning. So uh, based on this, these uh, principles of Sendai framework, which are know your risk, invest ex ante, and uh, build back better, we are as Development Cooperation Agency designing our menu and uh, whenever there is a request from the partner countries uh, we try to offer what uh, we can offer best. Yeah, In the uh, Asian context we have been maybe because it's, it's a neighboring area we are a little bit more used to uh, you know, like uh, uh, swiftly respond but maybe in your continent's uh, um, uh, context, we have so much more to learn and we would like to forge relationship on how to be prepared for the next set of uh, uh, natural disasters. And of course, uh, uh, we are so much willing to share our experiences in how to reconstruct that better. So precisely, um, I would like to ask you about resources. Uh, build Back Better, and it is very interesting that you mentioned it was indeed a concept that was very, very much popularized by the, uh, the Biden administration, notably. But that ah, that, that's true, that's right. true. <laughs> yeah, that for in a COVID context. Exactly, absolutely. But at first it was Japan that advocated for this context a lot, notably in multilateral... For, for natural data uh, 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 Absolutely. And therefore, of course, Build Back Better uh, implies resources, financial resources, but also institutional resources in terms of planning, for instance. And therefore, I was wondering about how you think um, countries in Africa, for instance, could build up these capabilities and how JICA or other Japanese institutions can help accompany uh, these changes. That resource mobile, I mean, re resource part, right? Exactly. Okay. Uh, let me share this experience of once again supporting the Philippines. I mean, um, the Philippines is hit by typhoons I mean, almost every year, and uh, uh, it has uh, so much stress on the uh, budgetary system, of course, yes. And over the uh, almost uh, 20 years, I have uh, uh, observed that as partner that the Philippines government cre was building their disaster risk finance framework, uh, which is really uh, categorizing um, very different risks uh, into many layers and then attributing or, or like a trying to uh, address these categorized risks with the instruments that match. So for example, for very extreme risks, uh, uh, they uh, uh, chose uh, catastrophic bonds, uh, which is really uh, using the capital market. But for many middle layers risks, uh, um, it is asking uh, partners to uh, be ready for contingent liability, so uh, lending in cases of need but quickly, very quickly. And then the, as for the other layer, it was really uh, trying to build their own uh, uh, reserve uh, fund in order to respond in, in particular for the needs of the local communities. So having a strategy, uh, I observed that it's really uh, an important first step. And uh, the, the good thing is that I also have also 
observed in the case of the Philippines is that, okay, so as concessional financiers, uh, uh, we responded to this need of a middle layer risk, uh, con concessional condition, uh, um, contingent liability, yes, but at the same time, but at the same time, uh, we uh, supported with this concessional finance the building of, uh, uh, for example, flood control systems uh, over the years so that uh, um, this ex ante investment can be realized. So all concessional financing. But, but of course, our budgets are also limited, so we cannot, I mean, perpetually uh, support, but the very wise, I mean, uh, um, thing about the Philippines is that uh, while kind of like uh, um, we as a uh, um, finance, the development finance partners supported the concessional part, they were very good in uh, 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 promoting growth, increasing the tax uh, uh, Admin, I mean, uh, collection, and overall, uh, they could create a fiscal space. And with that fiscal space, uh, they, they are starting to invest a lot in their own uh, ex ante prepa I mean, uh, preparedness type of investments. And I'm sure that uh, uh, the local uh, funds for reconstruction, uh, they are also uh, kind of like a reinforced. So uh, it takes time we have observed uh, in partnering but when you have a strategy and you manage both the uh, 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 response part um, ex ante investment part and the overall macro prudence and the growth there, there's a way forward yes that i mean uh, this is not what japan has then it's really our partner country and I have the privilege to observe that. Moto-san, uh, Vice President uh, of the Japan International Cooperation Agency, thank you so much for joining hey. us. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, it was such a privilege to share our um, experiences and we are very eager to contribute to some of the conversations in this continent. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. All the same. Thank you.